This is Glow in the Dark Radio. 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 The Science Fiction Podcast with original independent science fiction written and performed by Mike Luoma with music by Kevin McLeod the Vatican Assassin Trilogy and the Adventures of Alibi Jones by Mike Luoma are available in ebook, trade paperback and audiobook wherever you find your books online get links and details at glowinthedarkradio.com This is the Science Fiction Podcast, Glow in the Dark Radio. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. We've got the first part of Chapter 5 of Vatican Ambassador on this episode. It is a long chapter. I was going through the pages and I was like, how long is this recorded? And it turned out to be almost 48 minutes. So I'm cutting it in half. So we've got the first part. On this episode, Chapter 5, Part 1. We ended our last installment with a bang, or at least a thud, as B.C. got clubbed over the head. The powerful businessman Richard Wentworth of the Universal Trade Zone, the UTZ, was up on Lunar Prime for the new governor, Daniel McIntyre's Neutrality Declaration event, his new Neutrality Declaration thing. And he... Wentworth asked for a meeting with B.C. Seemingly not satisfied with his answer, Wentworth sent a couple of goons to collect B.C., and they have just clubbed him over the back of the head, knocking him out. So we're going to wake up with B.C. as we get into Chapter 5 of Vatican Ambassador, coming up on Glow in the Dark Radio. I'd like to give a thank you once again to my patrons who help support this podcast and my science fiction efforts, you can become a patron too and help support Glow in the Dark Radio for $2 a month, 5 bucks a month, or $10 a month. The amount is up to you, or, you know, just listen and enjoy. Don't worry about it. But if you want to become a patron, you can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Glow in the Dark Radio and sign up. For two bucks, five bucks, or ten bucks a month. You can also just go to my site, MikeLuoma.com or GlowInTheDarkRadio.com and follow the link to Patreon and sign up that way. My patrons will get this episode early this week. I do try to do things for patrons when I can. They've got a, a new video or old video that I shared in a new way last week. And, of course, as I say, this episode here, done a little bit early, is going out to patrons first. And patrons also are getting the latest audiobook that I put out, which is the entire Vatican Assassin Trilogy under one cover, Vatican Assassin Trilogy 3rd Edition, as an audiobook, 30-plus hours, for free, on Spotify. So, you get that, too, if you want it, if you're a patron. For more details or to sign up, again, patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio or glowinthedarkradio.com and look for the link to Patreon. Your chance to save on the ebook of that Vatican Assassin Trilogy collection is coming up, too, with the 15th annual Smashwords Summer Winter Sale that's going on July 1st through the 31st. As we head through the summer in the Northern Hemisphere and the winter in the Southern Hemisphere. It is July 1st through the 31st at Smashwords.com. They've been doing this now for 15 years. The 15th annual Smashwords Summer Winter Sale. It's an ebook sale, so my two big collections are 50% off. So that is why you get the Vatican Assassin Trilogy, 3rd edition, for just $2.49. And you can also get The Adventures of Alibi Jones Chronological Omnibus for just $2.49. During the month of July, as part of the 15th annual Smashwords Summer Winter Sale, an ebook sale 
at smashwords.com. We've got part one of chapter five of Vatican Ambassador on the way next on Glow in the Dark Radio. Wake up, go to work, work, come home, eat dinner, rot your brain out, go to bed, lather, rinse, repeat. Are you tired of an old humdrum life? Tired of things that just weigh you down and depress you? Wouldn't you rather just focus on things that are awesome? Tune into Nutty Bites. Find out what's awesome. Nutty Bites. Nimlast.org slash blog. Now here's Chapter 5, Part 1 of Vatican Ambassador on Glow in the Dark Radio. B.C. comes to lying on a couch. He's in a guest room in what looks to be one of Lunar Prime's finer hotels. He rubs the back of his head, feeling a goose egg. Damn, does that hurt? B.C. turns his head from side to side, trying to loosen his neck muscles. He blinks, trying to get his vision to clear and focus. He's coming around. B.C. hears a deep and slippery voice say, Good. I worried you'd hit him too hard, Lawrence. Can you hear me, Campion? I told you. You wouldn't like me knowing who you are. You've risen through the ranks a bit since we last spoke, haven't you? Ambassador! That's impressive. How's your head? Wentworth. Fuck you, BC says. Is that any way to start our conversation? Any way for a diplomat to talk to the UTZ representative to this ceremony today? I didn't feel like making small talk with a murderer, B.C. says as he tries to sit up on the couch. Murderer? Wentworth looks genuinely confused for a moment. Then the light of understanding dawns in his eyes. Who? Fiza? Wentworth asks. She's not dead, just gainfully employed. Making herself useful, you could say. She's still on my station, very much alive. She's not dead. That's not what I heard, B.C. says. Oh, yes, Wentworth says. That. You probably heard about the report. That's what we do with some of our more, um, indentured servants on the station. She's just officially dead, not actually dead. Makes the paperwork so much easier. It's just a formality. Terms of her employment, Wentworth says dismissively. Convenient for when you really do kill her, then? B.C. says. Anger in his tone. If I can believe you. I know you, Wentworth. Know your type. The kind of man who can tell another man anything he wants to hear in order to get that man to do what you want. You'll tell me she's not dead, whether she is or not, if it makes me open up to whatever it is you've dragged me here for. B.C. looks around the room. Wherever here is. You're still on the moon, Wentworth says. We haven't gone anywhere. I need information from you. Cooperation. I don't need you, he says with emphasis. I need you for what you know and who you represent. I am doing this in an official UTZ capacity, and so I officially apologize for your clubbing and kidnapping, B.C. interjects. You are not tied down, Campion. You can leave now if you like. Wentworth says with a gesture towards the door. After that thwack, I don't know if I can stand up without getting dizzy. 
Maybe not yet. Wonder if I got a concussion from that love tap. But, Wentworth continues, before you go, a question. Why have we lost all touch with the Vatican? Maybe because you go around clubbing their representatives? B.C. mumbles. He rubs the back of his head. What do you mean, lost all touch? I've seen the Pope on the news and stuff. Yes, but that's all we've seen or heard from this new Pope. We used to work closely with Pope Peter, as you know. This new man doesn't do us the courtesy of returning our messages. He ignores the UTZ Council, Wentworth says with some indignation. How rude. B.C. mocks him. Why won't he get in touch with us? Wentworth asks, losing patience. He won't get in touch with anybody, B.C. says, matching Wentworth's tone. What? I haven't heard anything myself. Not since he named me ambassador and told me to rebuild the mission up here. It's been a whole lot of nothing from the Vatican itself since January. Nothing? I find that hard to believe. You're the ambassador. There must be reports, communiques. Wentworth shakes his head. Nope, B.C. says. Afraid not. Oh, I send my reports back there, don't get me wrong. I report to them every week. But them to me? Not so much. But what about... Wentworth looks around. Then walks over to whisper to B.C. What about the OPO? Do I tell him about today's communique? What if it's a setup? Nothing for now. The OPO is done, BC whispers back, as far as I can tell. No word, no nothing. I can only assume our mission died with Pope Peter. The OPO ain't what it used to be. This isn't good. Wentworth says, as he turns to pace back across the room. You're telling me, B.C. agrees. He tries to stand up. Good. Legs holding. I'm standing. Gonna walk out of here soon. Ooh, still kinda dizzy. See if I can take a step or two. Are you leaving, Campion? Wentworth asks. Just stretching my legs and, you know, flexing my head, B.C. says, massaging the back of his head. What do you do without the Vatican's direction? Wentworth steers back to his main question. Just keep going. Rebuild the mission? Say Mass every Sunday? Just be ambassador, you know? Huh. Wentworth breathes a grunt, clearly not satisfied. That's it. No subterfuge? Subter what? No, no OPO stuff at all, if, if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. What would I do? B.C. asks. And who for? There's no one directing me. I'm pretty much a free agent. Right, Wentworth says. A pretend ambassador for an unreachable pope. <laughs> That's not what you call a position of strength now, is it? Wentworth growls a low chuckle. <laughs> How free does that really make you? Who's got your back now, Campion, eh? Bastard's got a point. I could find myself in his employment soon if I'm not careful. I gotta get out of here. Food for thought, then, isn't it? Wentworth gets almost playful. And maybe you're wondering why I don't just eliminate you, hmm? Now that I see your situation for what it is. Well, maybe. Wentworth draws close to B.C., looks him eye to eye. Maybe we're really on the same side. Ever consider that? Nope, never crossed my mind, B.C. snaps back. We can help each other, Wentworth offers. I don't know if I can take any more of your kind of help, B.C. says, and his hand goes back to again massage the spot where he was clubbed. 
You've made this unpleasantness necessary, Campion. I would have preferred we had started off better. Yeah, sure, but you know, it's funny. I react unusually poorly when friends of mine are forced into sexual slavery and or killed. Guess that kind of colored my reactions from that point forward. BC can't help the sarcasm. After you reported her dead, I, I can't say my opinion of you improved. I told you, we have an unconventional arrangement with many of our employees, where they are reported dead. Unconventional, I don't know. Prostitution and slavery are pretty old-fashioned. Nothing really unconventional about that, BC interrupts. Fiza's working at what she does best, working off her debt on her back. You know Fiza, B.C. You know she's trouble. She's less trouble now. Everyone's happy. Yeah, I'm sure she's ecstatic. At least. And certainly sometimes orgasmic, eh? Wentworth smiles a humorless smile. But enough about the slut. We have official business to discuss. Can't you stay for a little while? Hear me out at the very least? Have a seat over here at the desk. Wentworth walks over, next to the hotel desk, motions B.C. to the chair in front of it. I'm meeting you in an official UTZ capacity. You have nothing to fear. Other than getting clubbed over the head, B.C. protests. I've already apologized for that. And, as I've said, you forced the situation. Right, this is all my fault. B.C. can't help but lapse back into sarcasm. Can we get beyond this petty shit and talk about things of real importance? Wentworth asks B.C. as he sits down behind the desk. B.C. still stands. Such as, he asks. Such as, who is this new pope? Where did he come from? Wentworth presses. Wow. He is genuinely interested. How do I play this fucker? He's a smart guy. Gotta be vague. Information is all I have. My only currency with this bastard. <laughs> Not even sure what I know now, after the communique today. Can't just give it away. He's an old-school Roman Catholic, B.C. tells Wentworth. Giuseppe something. I know that. That's public knowledge. We've got the basic facts. But what's his deal? What, what drives him? Wentworth probes. I wish I knew, B.C. admits, shaking his head. Wentworth gets back up from the chair. He starts to walk back around the desk, pacing as he talks. So he doesn't have to look up at me? <laughs> Talk about in your face. Wentworth turns and faces B.C. from about a foot away. He leans towards B.C. as he grows serious. It doesn't do either of us any good if you hold back what you know, Wentworth demands. I'm not sure that I know any more than you already know, B.C. tries to explain. Pope Peter is dead. Linus II is the new pope. The O.P.O. has gone silent. The Vatican has been quiet. They talked to you, Wentworth argues. You were promoted, tasked with rebuilding this mission. Sure, B.C. laughs. <laughs> but since then, like I told you before, I haven't heard anything. I'm assuming I'm doing the right things, because they never question any of my reports. Why did they tell you to create such a secure installation? What you've rebuilt is far beyond what was originally here. Your new Vatican mission is heavily armored and heavily armed. It's bristling with hidden weaponry, capable of sealing itself off and running self-contained, independent from Lunar Prime. It's a small fortress, Wentworth insists. Why did they have you build something like this? Why do you care? B.C. asks. Can't let him get to me. Still, how does he know so much about my rebuild? How can he know all about the armaments and defenses, yet not be aware that it's all really been my own little project? 
Creating the kind of secure installation you've been trying to build attracts attention, Campion. My attention at the very least, Wentworth says, answering BC's unspoken question. Must have been written all over my face. What to tell him? We'd been hit hard twice, BC offers. We're obviously a target, so we took action to try to defend ourselves. Simple as that. He does not need to know they didn't tell me how to rebuild. Simple as that, Wentworth asks. BC nods. Wentworth smiles. I do not like that smile. It's a cat that ate the canary kind of smile. You did it on your own, didn't you, Campion? He asks. Wentworth nods. Smiling. Yes. A free agent needs a strong base, eh? They just said rebuild. The rest is all you, isn't it? BC doesn't answer. Wentworth pushes on. So, again, I must ask. Who's got your back, Campion? Who can help you when you're not locked away in your fortress? Who can help you now? Do you have a point? B.C. asks. He half turns to go. I really should get going. Please, where to? Wentworth asks. You could use some new friends, Campion. So could we. This could be a mutually beneficial situation. You think so? Why not? We'd be stronger together than apart. You need me, that's sweet, B.C. laughs. You're still expendable, Campion, don't forget that. We have other leads and other agents working on this Vatican problem. You're easily replaced. Don't get all warm and cuddly on me now, Wentworth, B.C. jokes. Wonder if he knows Mbeke. Could they have gotten to him already? What if that message was a setup? Is Wentworth doing this to check and see if their message got through? If I'll cough it back up at them? Whew, am I completely paranoid? Wentworth grins. There is no joy in his grin. What'll it be? He asks BC. Will you work with us? What have I got to lose? Agree, and I at least get out of here alive today. I'll work with you, BC tells him. I'll maintain my independence, but I'll be glad to work with you. We're on the same side, after all, right? B.C. says. He extends his right hand to Wentworth. Wentworth shakes his hand. Right, good, Wentworth says. Pack your things, then. You're coming to my station for a visit. We leave in four hours. B.C. shakes his head. No, 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 wait a minute. No questions, no protests, Wentworth interrupts, stopping him. Please, four hours. There are others who would like to speak with you. They're waiting back on my station. I see. No, I don't see. Wait a... This is already starting to suck for me. You know that, don't you? B.C. cracks. Wentworth doesn't answer. He stares at B.C. Okay, all right, I'll go, B.C. says, finally breaking the silence. Where should I meet you? Don't worry about that, Wentworth says. I'll send someone with you. He'll bring you to the ship when the time comes. I bet he will, B.C. says with sarcasm. That is just so entirely helpful of you. Thank you so much. B.C. lays it on thick. Yes, I bet he'll bring me to you when you want me. Have no doubt of that. He'll be making sure of a lot of things, I bet ya. Bruno! Wentworth yells out. One of the goons who had melted into the woodwork steps out next to Wentworth and B.C. Go with Campion here. He's going to pack for our voyage. Bring him to us at the ship in time for our departure in exactly three hours and forty-five minutes. 
Yeah, boss, I'm on it, Bruno grunts. BC stares at the hired muscle and grins his own humorless grin. Hey, Bruno, you gonna shake my dick for me after I pee? BC prods. Bruno's brow furrows. You don't sound like no priest I ever heard, Bruno says. Bruno looks at BC with death in his eyes. But then he looks over at Wentworth, and Wentworth motions for Bruno to calm down. Bruno will wait outside your residence as you get ready for our trip, Wentworth explains to BC. He will not be intrusive. Isn't that right, Bruno? Bruno grunts what might be a yes. Good enough, then, Wentworth says. See you in four, Campion. Wentworth walks back across the room. He sits down behind the desk and begins to busy himself with something on a screen in front of him. B.C. looks at Wentworth, then Bruno, then shrugs and heads out the door of the hotel room. He doesn't bother to look back to see if Bruno is following. That is Bruno's problem. Well, isn't this fun? Swimming with the sharks. B.C., with Bruno in tow behind him, heads back to the Vatican mission and his quarters. Bruno, good as Wentworth's word, does as instructed and stands outside B.C.'s quarters as B.C. goes inside to get ready for the trip. Don't get lost out here, Bruno, B.C. says as he heads into his rooms. Bruno grunts. Gotcha, B.C. answers. Once inside, B.C. secures his residence. Must have done something right if my new security measures attracted the notice of Wentworth and his bunch. Wonder if he's got any back doors to my system. He sounded... Don't know. Maybe he's just playing me. Guys like him want you to think they know more than they really do. Still, best to be careful. He may have a way into my info flow on some level. Sheesh, am I too paranoid? Or do I have to be, with these guys out to get me? After all, what kind of way is that to call a meeting? Club the ambassador? Don't know anymore. God damn it, everything's going to hell. Don't have much choice but to go with Wentworth and his goons. Might as well find out what he's pushing. The Pope doesn't seem to be anyone's ally right now. Maybe I can see Fiza, make sure she's still in one piece. Who knows? BC takes out the CCU. The crystal from this morning is still sitting in it. All right, Mbeke. Let's see if it's really you. BC runs through the diagnostic programs built into the CCU. The crystal comes up clean, authentic. Yeah, sure, but... That analysis is based on the old protocols. Got to do a more intensive examination. Good start, though, good start. But let's see if there are any DNA traces. That would make it nice and easy. Ah, uh, bingo. BC uses the unit's analytical programs to isolate two distinct DNA patterns. Both test as true, not constructs. No false patterns to fool with. Two sets. One should be the courier, the other, if this is real, and Beggay's. Let's see. This one's unknown. Could be the courier. No worries yet. Let's look at this and... Yep, and Beckay. Good to see you. Even a microscopic mode of you. So it's real. And Beckay's still out there somewhere. Presumably not at the Vatican. Not if this is true. B.C. reads the words of the message in the upper part of the CCU's screen. Pope Peter killed by faction who installed Linus. Not killed in U.I.N. attack. Mbeke. Doesn't sound like we've got a friend in the new pontiff.
That was part one of chapter five of Vatican Ambassador on Glow in the Dark Radio. Well, BC is getting to know Wentworth. Not that he likes him. Wentworth is not telling the whole truth about FISA, though. I will say that. So as horrible as he sounds, he's actually not quite that bad. Just seems that way right now. And Mbeke's message is a, a little bit ominous there, so. Interesting way to end. We'll take a trip with BC out to Wentworth Station on our next episode of Glow in the Dark Radio. And again, a thank you to my patrons, and if you'd like to become one, or you want to learn more about becoming a patron, or what that involves, what you get, just head to patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio to get more details, or go to glowinthedarkradio.com or mikeluoma.com and look for the link to Patreon. You can do that for $2 a month, $5 a month, or 10 bucks a month, and help support the podcast and my science fiction efforts. And of course, a big, huge thank you to those who are patrons now and do just that. And again, we're also looking forward to the Smashwords Summer Winter Sale, July 1st through the 31st at Smashwords.com. It'll be your chance to get a couple of my ebooks for 50% off. It'll be the Vatican Assassin Trilogy, 3rd edition, and the Adventures of Alibi Jones Chronological Omnibus, all of Alibi stuff in chronological order, both of those for just $2.49. So 50% off for the month of July at Smashwords for the 15th annual Smashwords Summer Winter Sale, which goes on all month. And once the sale starts, I'll put a link in the show notes. And that is all for this week. I'm your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. Thank you again for listening to Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio. This podcast presentation is copyright 2023 by Michael F. Luoma and is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License CC by NCND 4.0 Music by Kevin McLeod. You can find his work at Incompetech.com Mike's books are available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook wherever you find books online. Get links and more details at glowinthedarkradio.com and mikeluoma.com. This has been a presentation of Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio.